Thank you, sir. I like that we've been doing that lately. <laughs> it reminds me of what I'm supposed to be doing up here. And that's always important, that we are here to hear the Word of God. And it's not about me. It's not about what I do. But it's about us hearing the message of Jesus and the words of God. I'm glad that each of you are here this morning. I'm glad that you've chosen to come and be a part of this worship assembly. I think there's no better place that we can be. And I, I'm glad that, that each of us have come here to open His Word and to hear what it says. This morning, I want us to look at the faithfulness of God. I've been asked to preach for the next four weeks, so if you don't like today's lesson, come back for next week's, right? Uh, it'll get better from here. But I've, I've been looking at faithfulness, and uh, our work camp, our theme was faithfulness. And I think it's really blessed my life, and I want to share that with our entire congregation. And so for the next four lessons, we'll be looking at faithfulness, what it means for us to be faithful, what our journey looks like, what it looks for us to take steps of faith, what it looks like for us to share our faith. I believe that all of those things are very important and are something that God calls us to. But in any relationship that we have, one of the most important things for us to be able to put faith in someone is for us to be able to trust them. Now, yesterday, I, I've got I've to tell you that there were a few people that become, became a little untrustworthy in my mind. One person took a picture of me and sent it to someone else. They know who they are. And I thought maybe we should do some illustrations up here and have some things going on and see how much they trust me, you know, and see where our faith goes there. But then another person, we were playing, we had game night last night. We were playing games, and it's one of those silly games where you have to do things and that make you look foolish, basically. And I was supposed to yodel as, until I could roll the dice three times and it come up with a two each time. And so I yodeled and yodeled and yodeled and yodeled. And somewhere in between there, somebody started taking a video of me, and then they posted it on Facebook. <laughs> you think about relationships and how important it is for us to trust people. Trust is something uh, that is so important. For us to put our faith in someone, for us to be able to rely upon them, to lean upon them, trust is one of the most valuable things that we can have. I think about all our relationships that we have. There's all different types of relationships out there. Uh, here recently, we have seen a lot of people in this congregation get married. And we, we have seen them make vows to each other. We have seen them make commitments. And those commitments were even made before God, right? They made those commitments and they said, you can trust me. Whenever we are looking for somebody to marry, we always want to find somebody who is trustworthy, somebody who will be faithful to us. That's true in friendships. That's true with our children. That's true with our spouses. That's true with every single person in our life, even business partners. We want them to be trustworthy. Somebody that we find out on the street. We want them to be trustworthy. When we interact with people, we want trust to be a part of that relationship. I think about what God desires from us. He desires our faith to be put in Him and for us to be faithful to Him. But one of the things that, that we can see is that God is faithful to us. He wants a relationship with us. And when we know that He is faithful to us, that He keeps His promises, and that He does what He says He's going to do, it's much easier for us to put our faith in Him. And so this morning, I want us to look at the attributes of God, what it means for Him to be faithful to us, what He says that He's going to keep His promises. And so therefore... We should be faithful to Him. And we should desire that relationship. 
Since the very beginning of time, that's what God has wanted out of each and every single one of us, is a relationship with us. You see it with Adam and Eve in the garden. He wants a relationship with them. He wants to interact with them. He wants them to be a part of him. He wants them to do the things that he asks. But we see that they eat from the tree that's in the center of the garden, and that relationship is damaged. Not unrepairable, though, because that's what the whole Bible is about, is him desiring a relationship from you. If you look at Luke chapter 15, you see a parable that Jesus tells. It's three different stories within that, within that parable. But what leads into this parable is that Jesus is with sinners and with tax collectors. And you see in that, in that specific uh, chapter that, they are, that the tax collectors and the Pharisees are very unhappy with him for being with those people. And so Jesus tells these three, these three stories within this parable. He tells the story of the lost sheep, the lost coin, and the prodigal son. And those three stories are meant to tell us that God wants a relationship with us, that He rejoices when, he, when that relationship is repaired and that He wants to, to have us in that relationship. And so everything throughout the Bible is leading to us having a relationship with Him, that He is willing to go to any extent that it takes to have that relationship. He's even willing to lay down His Son's life, but it requires something from us, doesn't it? requires us wanting a relationship with Him. And so we're going to take a look at why we should desire that relationship with Him. If you would, open up to Numbers chapter 23. And we're going to look at a few attributes of God. The first one is, is God is truthful. He is somebody that you can trust, somebody that you can depend on because he is truthful. In Numbers chapter 23, verse 19, he says this, God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should change his mind. Does he speak and then not act? Does he promise and not fulfill? God is truthful. He fulfills His promises. He does what He says He's going to do. In Titus chapter 1, verses 1 through 3, just to back this up, he says, Paul, a servant of God, an apostle of Jesus Christ, for the faith of God's elect and the knowledge of the truth that leads to godliness, a faith and knowledge resting on the hope of eternal life, which God, who does not lie, promised before the beginning of time. And at, the, at his appointed season, he brought the word to light through the preaching entrusted to me by the command of God our Savior. God does not lie. He cannot lie. He is truthful in everything that he says. If you knew that you had a relationship where you could trust every single word that came out of somebody's mouth, that would be a huge blessing, wouldn't it? That's what we want we want our relationships to be based upon truth. God is truthful. Malachi chapter 3, verse 6. The next one that we can see is that God is immutable. That's a big word. God does not change. He does not change who He is or what He promises. He sticks to His promises. In Malachi chapter 3, verse 6, he says, I, the Lord, do not change. So you, O descendants of Jacob, are not destroyed. God does not change. He says the same thing in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8. It says this, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. He is always the same. He does not change. What he said at the beginning is true today, and what he says today is true today. It continues to be the same. He doesn't change. In our lives, we change, don't we? As we gain knowledge and as we learn things, 
Sometimes we don't have full knowledge. Sometimes we don't know everything. And we change because we need to change. Sometimes we see that we're not right in the things that we're doing and we need to change. But God is always right. He knows exactly what he's doing. And so, therefore, he does not need to change. He is always the same today and yesterday. He is somebody that you can depend on in your life. James chapter 1, verse 17 says this, Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. He does not change. He is the same today, yesterday, and tomorrow. He will always be the same person. You can depend on that, right? If you want to be able to depend on someone, that means that they cannot change their mind. They can't change what they're doing. They're always going to be the same. So God is dependable. He does not change. The next one is, is that God is love. In 1 John chapter 4, verse 7, I know I'm giving you a lot of scriptures and running you all over the place, and I apologize for that, but I think these are good for us to hear and to read. He says, Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. God is love. He loves you. He loves me. He loves everyone. That is his, his, his character. He loves every single person on this earth, and he does what's best for each person. You can depend on that. He loves us so much that he sent his one and only son to die for us so that he could have a relationship with you and me. And so the third one is, is God is love. Having somebody who cares about you is so important, isn't it? Whenever you enter into a relationship, you want to know that that person loves you, that they are looking out for your best interest, that they're going to do what's best for you. Here's the fourth one. God is omniscient. This means he is all-knowing. He knows everything. In Hebrews chapter 4, verse 13, it says this, Nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight. Everything is uncovered and laid bare before the eyes of him to whom we must give an account. It's kind of a scary verse in some ways, but thank God we have Jesus, right? He knows all. He sees all. He knows everything. Nothing can be hidden from him. He knows it. He knows everything that's going on. And when you think about someone that that you can trust, they need to know everything. When they make a promise, they need to know what's going to happen and how it's going to be fulfilled and how everything is going to to take place. Because if he doesn't know you, how can he take care of you? He knows everything that you need. And so, therefore, he is uh, omniscient. He is all-knowing. God is also omnipresent. He is always present. If you would, open up to Psalm 139. Psalm 139. Starting in verse 1. O Lord, you have searched me, and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you know it completely, O Lord. You hem me in behind and before. You have laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. 
Your right hand will hold me fast. God is everywhere. He is omnipresent. That means he is with every single one of us at all times. He knows us. He knows everything about us. And he is also present at all times. That means when I need him, he is there. He is able to take care of me. He is able to be in my life at all times. And you think about how important that is because God says you can trust him. You look at Matthew chapter 6 at the very end. He says that you can rely on him and know that he will take care of you. But that would require for him to be present. That would require for him to be with you at all times in order for him to take care of you. And he doesn't only make this promise to you, but he makes it to all of us on this earth. And so therefore, God is always present. Psalm 103, verse 19. God is omnipotent. It means he is all-powerful. He has the power to do what he says he's going to do. Psalm 103, verse 19 says this, The Lord has established his throne in heaven, and his kingdom rules over all. He is all-powerful. He is almighty. We, use, we read that word continually throughout the Bible, the almighty God. That means he is all-powerful. He has the power to do anything and everything that he desires. And so you think about the God that we have, and you look at these attributes. God is truthful. He does not change. He loves and wants what's best for us. He is all-knowing. He is always present, and he is all-powerful. What this means to me is that I can depend on him. That what he says and what he promises is true. He has the character to do it, number one, because he's always truthful. And he always does what he says he's going to do. But he also has the power to do it. He's always present. He's always with me. He has the power and the ability to do the things that he says he's going to do. Without that, I can't depend on him, right? Without those things, and without that relationship being that way, without those promises, it would be impossible for us to look to Him and be guided by Him. Here's the last attribute that I want to give to you. The last one is is that God is faithful. He is always faithful. He does exactly what He says He's going to do, and He doesn't change. The word faithful means that he is trustworthy, and you are able to lean upon him. Just like if I was to lean upon this podium, I I know that this podium is not going to fall over. I know that I can lean on it. I would not sit on a chair that I did not believe could hold me. That would be pretty silly, right? Because I would fall to the floor. But I would sit in a chair that I have faith that would hold me up in the air. And so we want somebody that we can depend on, that we can lean on, that we can trust in and know that he can do exactly what he says he's going to do and that he is trustworthy in what he says, that he is faithful and he is going to do exactly what he said he's going to do. And so we're going to look at a few verses that says that he is faithful. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 9. If you look up the word faithful, uh, you'll have a good assignment for the week to be going through quite a bit of, of God's word. But if you look up God as faithful, it will still take you quite a bit of time in looking at what you can depend on and looking at what you can know about him. But in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, Paul says this, God who has called you into fellowship with his son, Jesus Christ our Lord, is faithful faithful. He will do what he says he's going to do. In 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 13. 
I'll actually start in verse 11. It says this, Here is a trustworthy saying, If we died with him, we will also live with him. If we endure, we will also reign with him. If we disown him, he will also disown us. If we are faithless, he will remain faithful, for he cannot disown himself. You think about that transition there. If we disown him, he will disown us. But then he says, if we are faithless, he will remain faithful. There's not too many relationships in this world that we can depend on in that way. When somebody is faithless, most of the time we become faithless in them also. Not always. Not always true. You see this, though. I was reading uh, the book of Hosea just here recently. And the story of Hosea is a very interesting story. Uh, and in looking at it and taking in all of it and just imagining what that must have been like. But Hosea was called to marry a woman who would be unfaithful. And he was to remain faithful in that relationship. And he continually went back to her to get her and to bring her back into relationship with him over and over and over again. Yet she remained faithless. And it illustrated what Israel was like. And God's relationship with Israel. God being represented by Hosea who was always faithful. And his people always being faithless. Continually, day after day, falling and not doing what he had asked them to do. Chasing after other gods and not observing what he had commanded. But we have a great blessing in that while we are faithless over and over again, and we struggle and we fall apart, we have a God who is faithful. He will always be there. He will be somebody that you can depend on at all times. Take a look at Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 9. Moses is speaking to the people of Israel. Uh, back in chapter 5, he's giving the Ten Commandments to them. He's reminding them of who they're supposed to be and what God is going to do for them. And it can start in verse 1, looking at all of this, that he's promising them the land uh, that they are going to enter. And he does it as if they've almost already taken it over. Uh, it just in, in, in the way that he speaks about it, it is as if they are going to do it. He knows they are going to do it, and you can see his faith in what God has said. But in verse 9, he says, Know therefore that the Lord your God is God. He is the faithful God, keeping his covenant of love to a thousand generations of those who love him and keep his commands. You look throughout this, this entire chapter, and he's promising them the land that God is going to give them, that they are going to take it over, that they are going to have it. And he reminds them that God is God, that he is a faithful God, that he keeps his covenant of love to a thousand generations of those who love him and keep his commands. If you would, flip over to Joshua chapter 21. It's the end of Joshua's life. Joshua and Caleb were the two who stood up that said that they could take the promised land, that they could go into the promised land, and that they could conquer it. And you had the other ten, because he sent out the twelve spies. The other ten, no, this is, there's no way we can do that. The people are huge. The, everything is fortified. It is impossible for us to take this land on, for us to take over this land. But when you look at Joshua chapter 21 and, and where they have come, 
They had to wander in the wilderness for 40 years. And then finally God sends Joshua as the leader after Moses has passed in to take that land. And you can look at it from the very end, uh, the picture that is given in Joshua 21, 43. He says this, So the Lord gave Israel all the land he had sworn to give their forefathers, and they took possession of it and settled there. The Lord gave them rest on every side, just as he had sworn to their forefathers. Not one of their enemies withstood them. The Lord handed, <clears throat> the Lord handed all their enemies over to them. Not one of all the Lord's good promises to the house of Israel failed. Everyone was fulfilled. You see God keeping his covenant with Israel and them taking on that land and, and them destroying the enemies that were before them, that God promised them that they would have that land and that they would receive all of these promises. It says that not one of those promises failed, but that God is faithful. He says this over and over again. This is towards the end of Joshua's life when he is about to pass on, and he's reminding them of who they need to serve. He even asks them, who are you going to serve today? As for me and my household, we will serve the Lord, right? You see that up on everybody's wall, and you see, uh, you see those passages uh, put around. But we need to remember what God has done. When we remember that God is faithful, I think it reminds us that we need to be faithful to Him. The next few weeks, we're going to be looking at our faithfulness to God, what it means for us to be faithful, what that journey looks like, what it means for us to take steps of faith and depend on, on Him, but also about us sharing our faith with others and how important it is for us to be willing to do that. This morning I want to leave you with one last one thing. One last thing. <clears throat> In Hebrews chapter 10, we read this. <clears throat> Excuse me doesn't help to turn away from the mic when the mic is on your chest. I keep forgetting that this isn't on. <laughs> Earl read this for us, and this was our theme verse for our work camp. But I think about how important this verse is over all of these things. God has made us a promise that He will be faithful to us. He says, I'll always be truthful to you. I won't change I love you. He says that he, will, he knows what's going to happen, and so he can take care of us. He'll always be present. He has the power to do that, and that he'll be faithful in those things. He also promises the gift of eternal life if we will follow him. And I think about this passage and how it reveals that to us, that we as Christians have been called to follow Him and to hold unswervingly to it. So let's read it. Verse 19, it says, Therefore, brothers, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way opened for us through the curtain, that is, His body, and since we have a great high priest over the house of God, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. God has promised us eternal life if we will deny ourselves, take up our cross and follow him if we will give our whole lives to Him and honor Him with our lives, die to self and give, give your life to Him, He promises you that you will have eternal life. What a blessing that is. He says, hold unswervingly to the hope we profess. That means you're not, not going from one thing to the next, not swinging out here to this worldly thing to the next, but that you are setting your eyes, that you are focusing your eyes on Him. That's what it says in Hebrews 13, actually. That we are to focus our eyes upon Him. If you want to have a strong faith, if you want to be faithful to God, set your eyes on Jesus. That's how we do it. 
Today you have a promise from Him. You have the promise of eternal life. But it requires your faithfulness. It requires you to honor Him. It requires you to live a life for Him and to deny yourself and give yourself completely to Him. The question that I have for you this morning is, do you know that your God is faithful? Do you trust what He says? Do you know that the words that He speaks throughout this entire Bible affect your eternal life? Those things He promised to you, He is faithful in them. He is trustworthy in them. He has the power to fulfill them. The question is, have you put your faith in Him? Do you want that relationship that He offers? So today, we want to offer that relationship to you. Maybe you've turned away from that relationship. Maybe you've never had that relationship. We do that by baptism. We do that by being faithful to Him and by honoring Him in our walk. This morning, we want to offer that to you. Maybe you need prayers. Maybe you want to walk with Him. Maybe you need to, uh, need to uh, put your life back towards that direction. We want to offer you that chance at this time as we now come and stand and sing.